please go ahead and tell me how many times you heard the LG C1 or the LG C10 regarded as the best gaming TV. On that same line, how many times have you heard the Sony OLEDs be called the best for movies and TV? Now look, I know personally that I heard this a lot, so I wanted to test out these two TVs side by side, the A80J and the LG C1. They are direct competitors this year. They're similarly priced in the 65 inch size. Not sure what Sony's doing with those other sizes. Not the same price there, but they are competitors. So we'll look at their differences. Really quickly before I dive into the big details, let's talk about the basics. So the menu system, I think that the LG C1 is a little clunky. I definitely prefer the Sony's menu system. Overall, there's more options and it's quicker to get into. I think that the LG C1 is definitely lacking on that department. The remote, I like the Sony better. Yes, it's basic, but I feel like it's smooth and I don't have any problems pressing the buttons and getting in and out of content. I used to think that the Magic Remote was cool with the pointer and everything, but I think LG needs to ditch it and go with a regular remote system. I can talk about sound in another video and maybe even do some sound tests if that's something you're interested in, but I'll say straight up right now that the A80J is way better than the C1 in terms of sound quality. So enough about all of that stuff, you want to hear about picture quality, though you might have seen examples in the background, let's talk about some things in context. Let's touch on SDR performance really quick. Now when I first saw the Sony uh, doing this upscaling process, it just made me say wow. Man, like I was so speechless and it was crazy because this is one of those things where I'm like, hmm, this is kind of what I wanted in a TV for a long time. Are we finally at that technology? I think with SDR, the thing that impressed me the most was definitely gaming. And I'll touch a little bit more on that later on in this video. And I guess I shouldn't say SDR content. I should say really more 720p, 1080p kind of content, low res content, you know, that stuff gets upscaled really well. While I was testing this, the NFL draft was going on and I was checking out some of those shows. And when there was talking heads on the screen, this TV really upscaled all of that really well. It almost looked like native 4K at times on some of those broadcasts. The XR processor just added a depth to the picture. I don't know how to explain it. It just looked good. This is definitely one of those cases where I say that video doesn't do it justice. You have to see it to really appreciate it. And if you're somebody that sits closer to the TV, then this is a feature that I think a lot of people might like. So let's talk a little bit about that SDR gaming. We'll go over more gaming stuff a little bit later, but let's talk about SDR gaming because it really did separate itself from the pack here. The A80J was absolutely crushing it. And I mean, just destroying the LG C1 in terms of gaming performance for SDR. So those of you that own a Nintendo Switch or play SDR games on the Xbox, PlayStation, or even the PC, man, take note. SDR mode for gaming on the A80J has a lot of options for you to do. You can do so many different picture options to improve your picture quality and just customize it to your liking. On the other hand, the SDR gaming for the LG doesn't give you a lot of customization and a lot of that stuff is grayed out. You can't even change some of those settings. So that is very disappointing and SDR gaming is a letdown on the C1. So yes, SDR is definitely more impressive on the A80J, but that's not even where it's the most impressive. It's those low resolution games. It's the Nintendo Switch games, the 720p, the 1080p content. If any of you guys have ever played 720p, 1080p upscaled to 4K on a TV, you'll notice that it sometimes is fuzzy or it's a little blurry. And you just definitely notice that it was upscaled. It, there's not that clarity. You don't have that clarity at all. And the A80J kind of fixes this. It was really interesting to see it in Pokemon Snap side by side because the text was clear. Everything else was clear. And I just felt like it was almost like I was playing in 4K. So that was so impressive to me. And it doesn't really come out on video as good as I would like it to. 
Yeah, you'll see some textures are better on the A80J, but I definitely don't think you get the full look at what the difference was with my camera footage. Because yeah, I feel the difference was really dramatic and the reason why I use gaming clips in this video is so I could try to showcase some of that. So if we're talking about gaming, we're going to definitely have to talk about color because out of the box, that's what a lot of people care about, right? I know that there's a lot of people that say you should get these two sets calibrated, but that's not what I'm about, okay? I am trying to judge what the out of the box features are. First, you have to understand that I don't have enough knowledge to calibrate these TVs and I don't have the equipment to calibrate these TVs. Really proper calibration software and tools are really expensive. So you have to figure this in to the equation. Like I can't just take somebody's settings and call it calibrated. That's not calibration. So yeah, I'd rather just give you my out of the box experience with the settings that they give you and tell you what I feel based on the knowledge that I have instead of pretending like I'm a professional calibrator and giving you those opinions. My reviews are going to be no different than your reviews if you were to look at two TVs side by side. You're using your eyes, I'm using my eyes. So yeah, back on color. I'm not a color expert, but I could see that the LG C1 is definitely pushing a little bit of blue. And trust me when I say this, that using the blue light filter is not going to fix this. It'll just make things look more orange. And honestly, that's not something you'll want to do. I tried it and I wasn't a fan of it. Yes, it makes things look warmer, but unless you want orange skin tones, then don't use this. A big reason I say that is because I think that this TV also pushes a lot more red. I see that in skin tones because yes, out of the box, the colors are definitely popping out and they look good. They're nice and they're punchy, but it does push a lot of red, especially in skin tones. That's something I did notice compared to the Sony. While the Sony definitely has more natural colors and maybe some flatter colors to some people it might not be saturated enough but if you do feel that way you do have the option of things like live color which can add more saturation and give you more of that samsung like color and you can really just match the lg c1 with live color in my opinion okay next i want to touch on dolby vision content but first if you are enjoying this please hit the like button and consider subscribing and help me grow my channel thank you so much Let's talk about Dolby Vision content. All right, to me, both of these TVs perform almost identical. And at times you can notice that the Sony is a little bit brighter on some of the smaller details, but the C1 likes to get a little bit brighter on the bigger highlights. However, for overall screen brightness, I definitely feel like the A80J is brighter than the C1. Most of the time, the TVs kind of just act and perform the same. Though the finer details definitely do stick out more on the Sony. And other than that, yeah, it's pretty similar. And the reason I think for this is because it is using Dolby Vision. And Dolby Vision has control over pretty much everything. HDR performance. Um, I did notice that there was things that I seen on the A80J that I just did not see on the LG C1. Like in this Star Wars game, for example. If you look at that sun, I think it's the sun. But if you look at it, there is... Definitely some detail missing on the C1 that you would see on the A80J. Next, I took a little screenshot from God of War and Kratos. We're going to see that he just looks more like Kratos on the A80J. His skin tone is better and the details just appear better on the A80J overall. Next, we're going to take a look at this fake Viking Ezio in Assassin's Creed. And we're going to see that the details on his armor are, to me, more impressive than the C1. So with that, it does lead me into gaming. So we're going to talk about the differences here with gaming. What is the big deal with the input lag? Yeah, it's higher on the Sony, but is it that much higher that it's that big of a difference? I'll say no. I played it and I played Call of Duty. One of the things where input lag really matters, I have to say that realistically, I noticed zero difference. The other thing is the exclusion of VRR and ALLM. VRR not being there at launch is a big deal. And that's something that you're going to have to decide if that's going to be a big impact for you or if you're okay with no VRR for a little bit. All right, so let's get back into talking about some of these side-by-side -side examples. Let's go to this next example in Dirt 5. 
where when I'm driving, I'm looking at my license plate here and I'm seeing that the Dirt 5 text is a lot clearer on the A80J at pretty much all all times compared to the C1. I also noticed that some of the signs on the side of the road, some text on other places are just coming through clear on the A80J. A lot of these examples, I'll talk to you about clarity. Just look at this example about Call of Duty here. And man, I gotta say again, you can see it clearly better on the A80J. Things are just appearing more detailed and clearer. So in terms of clarity, it's not close. The A80J is the more pleasing picture here. So really, the A80J had me noticing things that I've never noticed before. Like on the intro for Call of Duty, you could see clearly there is a Doritos bag on the counter. I see it on the C1 as well, but it's not as clear. And it's just something that I missed when I was playing this game before. This next example we have is Mad21. And I'm going to show you an instant replay. And you're going to see that there is more detail on the A80J once again coming through that the C1 hides for some reason or crushes. Um, I'm not really sure, but let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see it more clearly. And yeah, look at the raindrops here on this helmet and also look at the texture on the helmet. Look at the gradation of the helmet. This is the stuff that I'm talking about when I'm seeing the A80J versus the C1 side by side. I'm noticing these things. And to me, they actually don't appear on video as good as I would like it to because in person, I think that the difference is a lot more clear. There are so many differences with these two TVs side by side. All right, next, let's talk about some issues that I did run into with both of these TVs. You know, uniformity wise, there was some vertical banding on the C1. I have mentioned that on the A80J, I had some uniformity issues as well. Though it wasn't vertical banding, it was like a white spot on the screen that I could sort of notice sometimes in content when I was panning. Hopefully it is noticeable on the video. You know, I could see it on my video. So hopefully you guys could see that. Uh, that was kind of disturbing to see. But I know that uniformity issues are going to be something you got to deal with. And also like you have to run your TV for a long time to really know if you have true uniformity issues because some of this stuff can go away so that is something you want to keep in mind that i did not run these tvs for 200 hours just i didn't do it i don't think <laughs> I, I mean i spent a lot of time with these tvs but i don't think it was anywhere close to 200 hours i also noticed the bright grid effect and when you see something bright like a bright circle uh you'll just notice like a little grid type effect on it and I did, I did notice that on both TVs. So both TVs have it. Is it noticeable? If you pause it and look at it, yeah, it is. Is it going to be annoying? Not really. I wasn't annoyed by it. Maybe you have a different tolerance level towards it. But eh, it's just going to be one of those things that you're either annoyed by or you're fine with. The other big problem was, yeah, in near black content for SDR specifically, man... Uh, that flashing is definitely annoying and it's on both TVs. So yeah, I was watching Cruel Summer on the A80J and I also had it next to it on the C1. And I have to say that I was actually enjoying the show and then I saw this flashing. It kind of was annoying. To be honest with you, I switched to my Q90T to watch the rest of that show. That's how annoying it was. So that might be funny to some people. No, not the fact that I was watching a teen drama on Freeform. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about how... A TV that is perfect black will struggle with near black content. And that probably makes a lot of people scratch their head. On HDR, you don't get as much of this, but on the C1, you'll definitely notice some dithering. And then on the A80J, it handles it a little bit differently. And sometimes you might notice a little bit of raised blacks from time to time. So yeah, those were some of the cons that I felt um, really kind of impacted picture quality for both TVs. All right, one thing I have to say is for gaming, I have so much more content for these two TVs. So if you want me to release a separate comparison with just gaming, let me know in the comments and I will do just that. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you guys want to keep seeing comparisons, subscribe to the channel. And I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.